Hello, Hascactus here. I've had a bit of a break, so please take my apologies for that one. In that time, quite a few things have happened. Most notably, though, probably the release of Pokemon Go. Team Instinct represent bitches. But among other things, the music industry has been particularly busy. Periphery released a fairly decent new album. Korn released a fantastic new track. Kane Hill released their debut album. Five Finger Death Punch released a very nice little homage video. And 21 Pilots, who released a video for their Suicide Squad track, Heathens. Which brings us on to today's video. This is Fandoms That I Ain't A Fan Of. It's important to bear in mind that just because I don't like the fandoms doesn't mean I'm not actually a fan myself. So it doesn't mean that every fan is necessarily this type of fan. So, 21 Pilots. Personally, I think they're great. Judge me if you will, but I honestly believe that a lot, if not all of the hate directed towards this band is strictly to do with their fans. Particularly online, you get a lot of claims from their fans that say if you didn't like them before Blurry Face, you're not a fan at all. You do get this sort of shit with all types of bands, but I do feel like it's coming through more with 21 Pilots at the moment just because they've kind of broke through into the mainstream. If you go onto Tumblr, you'll see this everywhere. There are loads of 21 Pilots fans on Tumblr. So my advice is just avoid Tumblr. And that's not just because of 21 Pilots, just, just avoid Tumblr. Going into a similar sort of region, another example is Melanie Martinez. Melanie Martinez hasn't managed to gain a huge following over here on the UK, but it's still big enough that you can hear the fans. My biggest dig with these fans is just that they like to make a point that Melanie Martinez is original and her own thing. And no one cares. Whilst I don't actually mind her music, at the same time, I don't find her music to be anything different to other stuff that's in the charts. The only thing that is different is her weird music videos, which quite frankly just freak me out. Now we're going to move off of artists, are we? Should I mention Blood on the Dance Floor? Now, this isn't a list, but if it was, these would be at the top of the list. I'm talking about Supernatural. Supernatural. Now, I will make a point about the fact that I don't like Supernatural anyway. I, I really really don't like Supernatural anyway. So maybe this is a biased opinion. Or maybe the fans really are cancer. My main problem with these fans is the gifts. Everywhere. They have a gift for everything. Not only do they have a gift for everything, they like making a point about the fact that they have a gift for everything. Now you might just think this is a small annoyance, and yeah, it is just small annoyance. But I don't like the show anyway, so obviously that's going to make it even more annoying. On top of that, they also try ruining other shows that I like. I'm a fan of Doctor Who and Sherlock, but I hate Super Who Lock because it ruins everything, I think. It just gets really annoying. And because of that, it took me ages to actually, actually watch Sherlock because I was that afraid of being in that category of the fans that, you know, like Super Who Lock because it just makes you look like a twat. Again, this isn't me making specific digs. My editor himself admits that he's a super Hulokian. I don't have a problem with that. It's just irritating. So that's going to bring me quite swiftly onto Doctor Who fans. Now there's two types, well there's a plethora of types of Doctor Who fans because it's been around for long enough. But I'm focusing particularly on Dweeks. Dweeks are irritating because they refuse to admit that there were any Doctors prior to the Ninth Doctor. Even going as far as labelling the Ninth through Twelfth Doctors the First, Second, Third and Fourth Doctor. You can imagine how irritating that is, as quite a big Tom Baker fan. Now, at the same time, you do have old school Whovians who refuse to watch the new series and everything classic is better. And again, it goes back to that sort of, if you weren't a fan then, then you're not a fan at all. But it's still irritating either way. You don't have to have watched all the classic series, I'm not saying that. But you do have to acknowledge their existence, because how can you not? <laughs> This is what's bringing me into Pokemon Go. So you see, we're going, we're going full circle. We're going full circle here. So Pokemon fans are irritating too. Would you believe Team Instinct represent? Team Instinct represent. And again, that is because people are making a point that you can't be a Pokemon fan if you didn't play the games before. Personally, I didn't really play the Pokemon games. I did play the Mystery Dungeon games because I like them sort of games. But for me, I was more into Dragon Quest. But at the same time, my brother was a big Pokemon fan, so I do still know a decent amount of stuff about Pokemon. Even if I didn't, who cares? I've been out more than I 
ever have probably since I've had Pokemon Go, simply for the fact that I can actually join the social experiences of a game outside. Admittedly, there have been problems with Pokemon Go, but overall I don't think you can ignore the social and cultural impact it's had. Now, I didn't want to make this video too long and have loads of fandoms that I hate because there are loads, so I'll just point out a few others. My Little Pony, otherwise known as Bronies. Blood on the Dance Floor fans. Dan and Phil fans. Metal fans. And finally, Suicide Squad fans. You heard me right. You might be thinking, but Suicide Squad hasn't even been released yet. Although, by the time this video actually goes onto YouTube, it will have been released. The reason I don't like Suicide Squad fans is because it hasn't been released yet. I understand hype. You know, Star Wars 7 came out, there was probably more hype over that film than I think I've ever seen for any film. Deadpool was pretty close because they had a sick advertising squad. Don't say squad. But Suicide Squad is just mental. Now personally, I'm not looking forward to the film. I don't like the general aesthetic, and I don't like the look of the tone of the film. But that's just my opinion. That's not what affects my opinion about the fandom. What affects my opinion about the fandom is the fact that they have die-hard fans prior to the film's release. People that are saying things like, relationship goals. You know, these people are criminally insane, you know? The, the Joker raped her, for God's sake. Other great quotes such as, wow, I wish I looked like the Joker. Not only is this the worst looking Joker I've ever seen, but would you, do you really want to look like the Joker anyway? Like, again, th this guy's criminally insane. He looks like a clown. And I have actually seen people online literally crying over the Joker and Harley Quinn. So you may think this, this is just these specific characters I do seem to be focusing on, the Harley Quinn and Joker. But I have seen it over Deadshot and Killer Croc and Diablo and the like, and it's still kind of weird because this is a film about criminally insane people and it's not even been released yet. So, what do you think? Let me know in the comments below what you thought. Give it a thumbs up if you agreed with me. If you didn't, let me know why. As always, thanks for watching, safe internetting, and adios amigos. Okay, as Cactus here, and back with the top 5 lists. So, this has been a busy week for me. This week I have opened a bank account, had my first driving lesson, um, made the new channel logo, and secured myself a job. Of What kind of opinions are going to be in the video following it? Some people do get offended really easily, and so I feel like it's my duty to tell them that, unless it's serious, no one cares. I feel like this is important. Periphery released fairy. Not a fairy. <laughs> oh, look, a magical, genting fairy.